then the question is, what makes a strong brand? Um, well, here's one way to look at it. Um, this uh, formula of three elements was created by the late Peter Doyle, one of your very best young marketers. Uh, he, uh, in his book, 1997, he said that, look, make sure your product benefits are clear and compelling, but maybe the competitor has clear and compelling benefits as well, but then add a distinct identity. You're, you're just different. You have a different history, a different way of doing business, maybe a different set of activities, and then make sure you've built in an emotional connection with your customers. Uh, now, you might say, uh, hey, I'm strong on one. I'm, I haven't really developed a distinct identity on two, and there's no emotional uh, in the session this morning, there was a woman who said she's, her job is to brand the London subway system, which we, you never think of. You just take it, you know. Uh, she has a feeling that the emotional side uh, has, needs some work. Um, and how do you really make people proud and happy and going on, down the tube and using it? Um, Okay, now another formulation that is, overlaps with that one was developed by Doug Hall. Uh, he, he's a consultant for P&G and actually does training courses in marketing physics, he calls it. Not a bad idea, marketing physics. Sounds scientific. Anyways, uh, when he advises P&G, he says, there's got to be an over-benefit. Uh, of course, a set of benefits, but something stands out about the benefit. But it has to be believable. I mean, you can claim a benefit that people could sort of say, well, that's just exaggeration. And then it, it has to make a dramatic difference in our life uh, or in, in, in the way we operate without. If we didn't have it, it creates a dramatic difference. So there are different formulations. And you could take any of your products and see how these two encoding approaches work. Okay. There's a process, but one of the insights is branding belongs not to the marketing department. It may generate from the marketing department, but it is an organizing principle for the whole offering. Um, it is uh, a management tool, the brand is, uh, used throughout the organization, and you even have to s sell your retailers and your, your wholesalers to live the brand if they carry your product. I mean, don't just get your own sales force to live the brand. You've got to get everyone in your network to invest in the brand and not spoil it. You know, any retailer can spoil your brand by saying, well, if you want a better TV set, uh, why don't you buy the Samsung instead of the XYZ? So if, you're, if your retailers are not, haven't bought into the value proposition. By the way, there are, one of the biggest problems is your sales force hasn't stuck to the value proposition. A salesperson might do anything to get the sale. Say anything. Things that shouldn't be said as a reason to buy your product. And one of the headaches of marketers is, God, these salesmen, they don't stick to the value proposition. They'll cut the price. Instead of selling the price, they sell through the price by cutting the price and getting the sale. 